Hey, Joe Alden, MD here. And I'm Amy Alden, ARNP. Our focus is disaster, epidemics, and first aid preparedness. We want you to know what to do in situations where medical help may not be available for the short term or even the long haul. One of the ways we offer this information is through our videos. If you like our videos, we hope you'll subscribe to this YouTube channel. Hi, I'm Joe Alton, MD, also known as Dr. Bones of doomandbloom.net, where you'll find over 800 post videos and podcasts on medical preparedness for any disaster. Together with my wife, Amy Alton, a nurse practitioner, we're the New York Times and Amazon bestselling authors of the Survival Medicine Handbook, now in its 700-page third edition, and other books, including the brand new Zika Virus Handbook, and the designers of the awesome board game Doom and Bloom Survival, recently named by the Prepared Family blog as the Teaching Preparedness Resource of the Week. You know, it's pretty clear in these uncertain times that there's a new normal out there. There will always be the possibility of a terror event or shooting anywhere that crowds of people gather. Every day there's an event where a terrorist or madman causes death and destruction, but if you learn to be situationally aware, you won't be a soft target for these savages. The basics of situational awareness are described in what's called the OODA loop. It was first devised by Air Force fighter pilot Colonel John Boyd. Originally meant to help in an aerial dogfight, it's useful in all sorts of settings. Now, the four steps of the OODA, O-O-D-A, loop are observe, orient, decide, and act. It's called the loop because you go back to the observe step after you act to see if the situation has resolved or further action is needed. Observe, yellow alert. Now, you've heard of red alert, but let's go to yellow alert as our stance in most cases. Yellow alert is best described as a relaxed awareness. You got your head up, you're scanning the surroundings with all your senses. Most people associate situational awareness with what they can see, but you can also learn a lot from the sounds, or lack thereof, and even smells in the environment. Now, it's important to stay relaxed. Staying relaxed ensures that you remain focused on the important aspects of the environment, but not to the exclusion of new factors that might arise. Put yourself in a position for optimal observation. You need to be able to take in as much of your surroundings as you possibly can. When you enter any environment, place yourself so that you can see as much of the area in question. If it's a restaurant, have a view of the exits, maybe a table by a wall. You might not be able to choose which table to sit at, but you can pick a chair certainly, which gives you the best view of what's going on. Orient, baselines and anomalies. Being observant is not enough. You have to know what you're looking for and then put that information into context. The orient step allows you to establish baselines and anomalies for a particular environment and the human behaviors that match it or don't. Whatever setting you're in, establish a baseline. A baseline is what's normal in a given situation and it's certainly different for different circumstances. For instance, a baseline at Starbucks is people reading books, working on their computer, or talking with friends. The baseline at a rock concert, however, would be loud music, people jumping up and down and shouting. But if somebody's jumping up and down and shouting at Starbucks, that's what we call an anomaly. Anomalies are things that should happen in a situation but don't, or things that do happen but shouldn't, and are what we need to focus on. Questions that you might ask yourself in a crowd, what's the general mood? How should people be behaving? Who's doing something that's different from the norm? For example, is somebody acting in an aggressive manner? Most people are in submissive mode normally. We all want to get along after all, right? If someone's at a burger joint screaming at the guy behind the counter, I said no cheese, you idiot. Well, that's someone you want to keep an eye on. Is someone acting too interested in something that ordinarily wouldn't catch their attention? If you see a guy staring at the garbage can in your workplace, well, that's an anomaly. If they're too uninterested though, that's also something that's not normal. Say there's a ticking suitcase in the middle of the mall and only one person isn't paying attention to it. That's an anomaly. Perhaps the most significant anomaly is someone that's acting uncomfortable in a place where everyone's relaxed. People appear uncomfortable in many ways. One of them is constantly checking their six, that is, always looking nervously behind them. If someone's constantly looking over their shoulder, that's an anomaly that deserves your attention. That's not to say that everyone who's uncomfortable is a threat. They might be late for work, for example, or just had an argument with a significant other. 
Still, you want to keep an eye on them. On the other hand, someone who's comfortable when others are in a panic, such as videos of the Boston Marathon bombers showed, could be someone who expected the disaster to occur. Now you might take a look at what people are doing with their hands. Law enforcement often wants to see the hands of people they're suspicious of. Those who are constantly patting a pocket or reaching inside a jacket, especially if a jacket isn't warranted for the weather, could be concealing a weapon or worse. Decide and act. Once you've decided that there's an anomaly that might represent a threat, have a plan of action to counter it. If a guy with a gun shows up at your workplace, the best course of action might be to hoof it out of there. If he's right next to you, however, and escape is unlikely, your best choice might be to act and incapacitate him. To recap, observe the situation, orient to establish baselines and look for anomalies, decide on an action, then act and commit to those actions. All this attention to detail may seem paranoid to you, but it's time to realize that these are dangerous times. Incorporate a constant state of relaxed yellow alert by putting away those smartphones and incorporate the OODA loop whenever you're in a crowd. Do this and you'll be situationally aware enough to gain extra time that could mean the difference between life and death. This is Joe Walton, MD, that old Dr. Bones, wishing you the best of health in good times or bad. Thanks for watching.